All right, Mr. D, let's talk a little bit about corn. And the corn is really jumping out of the ground now. It's blowing and going now. Kind of had a slow start this year. It was so cool and damp conditions early, and, and we had a little trouble with it early, but it's it's, it's blowing and going now. Doing pretty good. Uh, really doing good. Um, but if you, so, so really, it's too late to start talking about planting corn. Yeah. Really. I yeah. mean, you can plant corn now, uh, and you could probably harvest it sweet corn, uh, but you're going to have a lot more insect problems and you'll have to really fight the European corn borer and, oh. and earworms and things a lot more now if you start with it this late. But, uh, you know, growing corn is, is pretty easy to do if you uh, soil test, you know, check your soil level, make sure your pH is up there where it ought to be, you know, six and a half. Uh, uh, with corn, it's not a legume, so it doesn't put nitrogen in the soil. Mm -hmm. so. You're going to need to side dress it, and you know some of our plot corn is only about this tall. And then within the next couple of weeks, we'll be going in there and hitting it with more nitrogen, additional nitrogen. But okay. you fertilize according to soil test before you plant, and then you side dress uh, with a, in a home garden. It's about I think about a pint of ammonium nitrate or 3400 okay, yeah. per hundred foot a row yeah. or something like that. Um, scout. Keep an eye out for insects. Uh, European corn borer and uh, the corn earworm are probably a couple of the worst insects right. that, that can create problems. What kind of damage do they do? Uh, the uh, European corn borer is the first one that you'll get, and they'll get into the uh, plant when it's small, and uh, they'll feed in the whorl of the, the leaf, uh, the whorl of the plant down in the very center of the plant. And if you can imagine, that new leaf is developing, and it's like a quarter of an inch yeah. long, and you've got a little caterpillar that's probably about an eighth of an inch long feeding through that tiny little leaf wow. and then the corn plant continues to grow and when the leaf becomes 36 inches long and, and four inches wide those little bitty holes are, are that like you know they're okay. like a, you know a quarter of an inch in diameter they okay. really look like real look, looks, looks like you have a real big critter feeding on your leaves but it's old damage okay. and it really okay. doesn't affect the plant. Uh, the corn earworm, of course, uh, that's later, that's when you have the, the, the ear being formed and the, and the corn earworm gets in and feeds on the kernels. And uh, so you really try to protect that ear, you know, when you're, you know, when it's silking and from, from the time of silking until, until you harvest almost, you pretty much have to mm. protect that. Unless your, your variety happens to be BT yeah. corn. If it's got the Bacillus thuringiensis gene in it, then when that critter, either either of those critters, the European okay. corn borer or the earworm feeds on them, they'll get a big stomach ache and die. You know, they, they <laughs> that's really what you want. Yeah, that's what you. Yeah. And I, you know, I know there's some BT varieties out there. The the most popular varieties, uh, Silver Queen is the white, sweet, really sweet, sweet corn, which is really good. And then Peaches and Cream is one that's kind of mixed between you know white and yellow, and it's really sweet also. It's a good variety. Harvesting co sweet corn is, is important. It's best to harvest it early in the morning and you realize that the sugars in the sweet corn, as soon as you harvest it, begins to turn to starch. Right. So so harvest it early in the morning and you know try to get it in a cooler or, or something to, to slow down that, that uh, breakdown of uh, uh, sugar to starch and, uh, and uh, you know, harvest only what you need. And, but harvest it right if you wait too, long, too late and then the, the, the kernels will get real hard and mm. you know so, so it's just it's best in a home garden situation if you can kind of stagger your plantings okay you know plant you know uh, a row or two you know and then wait a couple of weeks plant another row or two that way you'll spread out your harvest a little bit it's a good idea so what about hills versus rows as far as planting your corn does it make a difference <laughs> you know uh i don't really think so i i know i've all, always planted corn in rows and you know you, you don't Get corn too thick. It's a big plant. It mm -hmm. takes a tremendous amount of nutrients from the from the uh, soil and takes a lot of water to produce corn. And so I, you know, eight inches apart is close enough for sweet corn. You can even stretch it out a little further than that. But but eight six to eight inches apart is good if you don't have a lot of space mm -hmm. in rows. And you know, there's no need to bed it up. They but they will work in, in beds or um, it's it's just not as uh, uh, you need some room to grow corn, yeah. realizing you only get one ear, maybe two ears off each plant. So if you only have four or five corn stalks in a raised bed, you're not going to feed a very large family. Right. You know, 
you may have one meal. <laughs> Just the one meal. <laughs> That's provided. Maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe, right? I house. do. Love corn. <laughs> and also, it's a good idea to plant enough corn for you and the raccoon because uh -huh. raccoons also okay. like sweet corn. And okay. If you only have four or five plants and they take three of them down, they've taken you know, most of your crop. Oh, and man. if you've got a row up, you know, 25 feet long, you know, they take 10 feet of it out, you still have some sweet corn. So you got to share. How about that? Go share with raccoons. Most so, so what about watering? Because we know corn needs a lot of water. It needs a lot of water. It needs a lot of water. I would just, uh, you know, any week that you don't get a half inch of rain, I guess cool. kind of treat it like you do your yard. Yeah. You know, any, any week that you don't get a half inch of rain, give it a half inch. And then as the crop is maturing, uh, you know, you're going to up that a little bit. Drip is a really good way oh, to, okay. to, to water corn. Uh, if you, uh, you know, soaker hoses, if you have it in rows. Uh, to try to keep the water off the foliage just as yeah. you would your ornamental right. because sure. uh, there are diseases that will attack corn. There's several diseases that uh, will attack them, and you try to keep that foliage as dry as you can. Okay. You know? How is corn pollinated? How is corn pollinated? Yeah. Uh, the, the tassel that comes out the top of the plant releases pollen. Okay. Pollen will fall down to the uh, silks. Each silk. On, that comes out of the tip of an ear of corn, you know, the, the pollen will go into that. That silk is a hollow tube, huh. and that pollen will go down that hollow tube, and each each kernel of corn has its own silk. And so if pollination occurs, you know, that, that that's how it happens. And, and, and it doesn't happen really well when temperatures are in the upper 90s oh, and 100, around 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. and, and when it's that hot, it just doesn't occur. I don't know whether the pollen can't get through the silk. The silk, you know, draws up too small or what. But but when temperatures are really really hot, um, we have trouble with pollination. And so if you uh, if you've got a uh, your corn in a bed and it's really hot, you may want to put a fan on it. You know, during <laughs> pollination and uh, try to air condition it or get out there and fan it. Yeah, and cool it down a little but, bit. Uh, but uh, in the field and 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 during the real hot dry conditions, we had a few years ago. It was not at all unusual for to have a cob with no kernels on it, uh -huh. and you don't get much money out of that, you know, when you're trying to sell corn for farmers. So um, they really, really, the farmers really get concerned about high temperatures when pollination is occurring. Well, and I haven't seen, I've seen, I haven't seen much corn, you know, silking and tasseling yet, yeah. uh, tasseling, but uh, uh, it won't be long. They'll start doing that. Wow, so each individual... And it usually happens soup. during the hottest part of the year, too. So, yeah. you know. But corn likes hot weather. Though. It likes hot weather for growing, but but not pollinating. Not really hot. I mean, but, I mean, 85 yeah. degrees, you know, it's fine for pollination. You know, typical average summer temperatures is okay for pollination. Okay. But the really, really hot, you know, temperatures like we had, you know, a few weeks ago. And, you yeah. Know, it's, it's, uh, makes it tough. All right. Mr. D, we definitely appreciate that. And... uh Plant extra for the coons. Plant extra for the raccoons. That's for, sure. for the raccoons. All right. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.